Um, heard a lot, read a lot about the build-up to the game being about me playing my old school, and it really, it really never came to that. Maybe I'll feel more about that as we head back into Eugene and play in a month or so. Uh, this was about my basketball team and the next hurdle that I needed to overcome. And they played real good on the road in conference play. They needed to come back home and handle all the adversity of playing at home. And sometimes you think there is no adversity. There's a lot of adversity because now uh, you have classes, uh, you have the students back, you have people patting them on their back. And you can really fall into a, a trap and not have yourself ready to go like we are when we get on the road. We're able to keep them in hotel rooms, keep them together, keep them in walkthroughs. So I was proud of the fact that they got themselves ready to play. Uh, my staff did an outstanding job getting them ready to play with the scouts and everything, and they responded well. And when you're in an environment where you have to come down the wire with a chance to win a game and don't get it done and come back and play even better during the overtime, uh, that's pretty impressive. It, it seems like with this team, the bigger the stage, the better they're starting to play. And if that building continues to be on fire like that, with the students coming back and the energy they provided, the energy that came from that community sitting behind my back, there's so much more basketball in us. And you've seen a team that is really, really growing up before your eyes. It's Washington State's basketball team. Uh, it is a joy and an honor and a privilege to coach them because that's an excellent group of young men down there that have really bought in uh, to what we need for them to do. We have time for like five questions. So. I thought I answered them all. That's why I do it. I try to answer everyone. What else could you possibly ask? Now? The team, uh, the team is growing up before our eyes. How, how much more growing is there to do in a game when they're hitting over fifty percent? They, they make their free throws at the stretch. What, what more do you have to see out of this team? Well, to give you a, 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 an example of that, how about Dexter Kearns Drew? He finally came to the party and got on his A game tonight, and that's what I mean by you still have. Jackie Davis, Aaron Cheatham sitting there. Uh, you still have Trevor Dunbar sitting there. Guys that can still get on their games and bring something to the table. Jordan Rayleigh wasn't the game for him. It was a guard game, a skill game, a small man's game. So he has to bounce back now on Saturday. So as guys gain their confidence and start to play better and get on what I call their game, and now let me get on your A game. Don't give me your C game, give me your A game. We can play better. We can play smarter, we can play harder, we can defend better. Uh, we looked at the halftime, they had seven offensive rebounds. That shouldn't happen if you block it out and pay attention to detail. They had 11 second chance points out of that. That should not happen. And their bigs were driving us too much. That should not happen. So that's growth potential there to understand how you stay accountable possession by possession in a 40 minute game to know your job and do your job. Usually that's your juniors and your senior teams that can do that the butlers of old uh, that are seniors that really can grind you out. This team is young and they make mistakes. And those mistakes against a good team or a good player like Young, they make you pay. So when you talk about growth, we can get so much more mentally tougher to understand the grind of a 40 minute basketball game, which is in essence, it's a miniature version of a season to where you handle all the ebbs and flows of the game. Bernie, when you look forward to Saturday, if there's recruits from other sports coming in, it's a weekend, so more people can get down to the game. How big is a game like that this Saturday for not just the basketball team, but the athletic department in the city? I think it's, it's, it's huge. Anytime any of your programs have success, you know, our, our soccer team going to the tournament and their success, women's basketball got off to a tremendous start, their success, in anything. If our cheerleaders go back and win nationals, all of that's great, because all of that does, it puts Washington State out in the front. And when you can do that, you can go down and recruit more, your stage just gets bigger. So for us on Saturday, you know, things fall in line. We're no worse than third coming out of Saturday. But you can come out of Saturday in, in first place, possibly, if things fall in line. You're talking about a team going from worst to first in 10 months. That's pretty amazing to me. And that's a credit to my staff, and that's a credit to those young men in that locker room and how they bought in to what we need for them to do to be successful. That's pretty impressive. It's hard to do, in fact. How about Ike off the ball? Kind of blossomed his game a little bit, but with the way he's passing right now, is there any thought of moving him back into that role? Nope. He's passing so well because he's off the ball. So what we've done is freed him up. And when you free them up, you can bring them back. But a lot of what Ike is doing is in transition where we get out and run. So I like the fact that we can play him and I together. It makes us faster, quicker. It gives them an opportunity to start the, us to start the game really fast with him on the wing. And then you bring them back to the ball. So in essence, 
He's learning how to play better being off the ball so that we bring him back. He's sharper and crisper in terms of understanding what he needs to do for us to be successful. Last question. How about, uh, how about Brett playing probably the best game of his career so far? How many minutes Brett play tonight? 30. 30. Now think about that. He played 31 at Washington and 30 tonight. And a guy that was buried on the bench last year. And all he does is give you everything in his tank. He's, he's not the fastest. He, he doesn't jump the highest. But he plays so doggone hard. And I thought his shots tonight were big, big, those threes he hit. So I'm happy for him uh, because he's a young man that's really starting to settle down and, and know exactly who, is, who he is. He understands his role. And that's the thing with this team. Guys are starting to figure out what their roles are. They're starting to get comfortable.